My name is Vicki Wright Hamilton. I am the president and founder of VWH Consulting. Now I know we're here to talk about generational wealth. My first question is, what is it? What does it really mean? I'm gonna share with you my thoughts of what it means. See, to me, there are two paths when we think about generational wealth. One is called wisdom generational wealth. The other one is called financial asset generational wealth. So what do I mean by wisdom generational wealth? You know, all of the people that come before you gain wisdom. They've had experiences. They have seen things. They know things. That is wealth of information. That is power of information. Because see, the more you learn from history, the more we're likely not to repeat it, but to make it better. Never underestimate the power of wisdom and experience. So when we want to lead generational wealth to our younger generations, share that wisdom, share your experiences, share what worked well, what didn't, what happened in the community, what happened in society, what was the world going through? How did you deal with those trials and tribulations? Because all of that is powerful information for those you're leaving behind and extremely important because I know we all come around and say, oh, I remember when my grandmother used to say that to me, or I remember when my grandfather used to say that to me. All of that is part of wisdom, generational wealth. And we all can share that regardless to where we are. Now let's begin to talk about financial and asset wealth. That's something that everybody begins to speak about. How do I have financial wealth? How do I have asset wealth? Well, let's break those up in a little bit. Financial, as we think about it, can simply mean dollars and cents. How do we give dollars and cents to the people that we're leaving behind? And there's many ways to do that. You can set up trust funds. You can set up savings accounts. You can set up beneficiaries on insurance. There's lots of ways to begin to build that dollars and cents. But when we think about assets, the most valuable thing that we have that appreciates, that has not been taken away from us, that we can utilize, that can work for our good in the future. Those assets may be land, it may be houses, it may be apartment buildings. It's some physical asset that will appreciate. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's worth more tomorrow than it is today. And the more we keep it up, the more value we can get out of it. The worst thing you can do with an asset is not keep it up. Because we can have a house, and if we don't keep the value up, even though it appreciates, we don't get the maximum value out of that asset. What ends up happening is we end up selling it, and we end up not getting what we want for that asset. The other thing is, is that when you think about the asset that you're getting, you want to understand what is it going to be used for? Is this something for us to continue to get rental property off of that we're going to continue to get residual income? Is it going to be a place for us to live? Is there a place that we can build the next thing, the next idea, you know, create the next opportunity utilizing that land or that home or that building moving forward. Now, to bring these two points to home, I want to share a personal story with you. When I think about wisdom generational wealth, I think about my mother. My mother was a civil rights advocate. She stood up for what she believed in. She was a professional. She worked her way through everything and came from literally nothing. She had very, very humble beginnings. Went to college with a coat on her back, a dress, two pairs of underwear, one pair of shoes, and one pair of socks. And before she died, she had been um, ahead of multiple states and universities as dean of students and, 
and uh, actually carrying on the education for others in terms of making sure um, that others could learn going forward. She did things for the mentally retarded. She was on President John F. Kennedy's board. She, she did a lot of different things. But through all those experiences, she shared them with me. She allowed me the opportunity to grow, to learn. And I would say, Mama, how did you overcome when you had so much negativity? How did you deal with being a black woman and people shooting you down? How did you deal with being the only? What did that feel like? How did you feel being the light-skinned black versus the dark-skinned black, where we get just as much criticism from our own people, not much, just others? So how did you deal with those things? It was through that wisdom and that foundation that gave me the ability to know, don't let anybody tell you what you can't be. Don't let anybody tell you what you won't be. Anything you put your mind to that you're willing to work for, pray about, and ask God to lead you to is nothing but success. Now, on the flip side of that, from a personal story, as an entrepreneur, I own my own business. I am blessed and fortunate to have my daughter-in-law work right beside me. What a blessing, keeping the money within the family, allowing the family to blossom even while I'm alive. But the beautiful thing is, I'll have someone to carry it on. I will have someone that understands the vision, understood why we're doing what we're doing, where we're going, why we're going in that direction, and how my value is all about serving others. So being able to share with the family during the process while it is occurring is a blessing beyond blessings. She's phenomenal. She takes the time to learn. She asks questions. She wants to understand the strategy. She wants to understand why. She wants to understand why not. Wants to look at the pros and cons of everything. It's that kind of dedication that's going to allow me to be really comfortable when I get ready to retire to sell this business to my son and to her so that it can continue to prosper. It can stay within the business, within the family, and the business continue to grow and give dividends that they'll be able to benefit off of. So I have done it on both sides. Now, from a financial side, I've made sure that I do have financial um, assets, no matter how small it may be, where they are beneficiaries. There's trust funds. There are things that they can have as liquid, disposable liquid of cash that they may need moving forward. So I want to make sure my family is able to continue to move forward. I'm not trying to make it so they don't work. Don't misunderstand me. We all need to earn our keep. Generational wealth doesn't mean I'm leaving you with everything so you don't have to do anything. Generational wealth means I'm leaving you things so you continue to grow it and continue it to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. So it never stops. So it's always about improving and making it better. That's why we have the talks about generational wealth. Because we want the next generation to be, off, be better off than we were, but we want them to be able to continue it for following ones to come. So I encourage you, as you think about generational wealth, think about the wisdom generational wealth, as well as the liquid of the financials of the money, not to mention the assets that you can actually gain. And I don't care if you start with a penny in your piggy bank every day and you continue to grow and grow. All of that will lead you to what? A very prosperous generational wealth opportunity for your family. If you're looking to get in touch with me, you can reach me at Vicki, V-I-C-K-I, Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, Hamilton, H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N, dot com, and feel free to drop me a note. I am on LinkedIn, I am on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter. You can reach me anywhere. I look forward to having a conversation with you. Thank you.